Ah. All right. So can everybody All see right. color theory for miniatures? Yeah. Yep. Very okay. good. Now, when we're in this, oh, I can see you guys. Never mind. I was going to say I can't see you, but I can. <laughs> so that's great. Okay. Um, so what we're going to talk about a little bit today is the fact that, you know, when we're doing miniatures, color is just such an important element of everything. Not, not just miniatures, but, you know, everything that's visual. So um, it's just a way to think about color and maybe give you some new ideas. Uh, if you're having some problems uh, deciding what colors, this may give you some ways to approach that that you hadn't thought of before. And then there's some things about using color in miniatures, especially if you're going for a lot of realism, that I'm hoping that this will give you some tips that are useful. Okay, let's get on with it. So feel free to jump in anytime if you've got a question. So I start- uh, One thing, start Diane, anyone, if, if something, you know, have noise or anything, do you know how to mute yourself? No. Up at the top of your screen, it'll say mute and unmute. Oh, it's down at the bottom. Okay, yeah, it can be different on whatever different things you're on. Okay, go ahead, Diane, thank you. Okay, so color theory, which was what we're gonna be talking about today, isn't just for artists. It's an important part of your life. It's part of everything we make, and you can it can apply to what you wear every day. Uh, for me, it applies to how I organize my closet. I've got my colors, uh, my clothing organized by colors in my closet because I was thinking, oh, I want to wear the red shirt. So since red came first out of my mouth, I put all the red stuff together. Um, there's no such thing really as a beautiful or ugly color, really. Um, it, there's just colors of different saturations, values, and hues, which is what we're going to talk about. And each color plays an important role in the overall harmony of what you've got going. So it's a piece of the whole mix. And like, you know, it's sort of like planning a menu, you know, you don't want to put in some kind of a food that's not going to go with the other foods. So this is a way to uh, help you get to that harmonious uh, goal that we all have. And there's no gift of color. I mean, you know, some people, oh, you have, a, you have such an eye for color. Well, the good news is that if you don't think you have an eye for color, you can get one. Uh, it just takes a little effort, and it's like any of the other million skills that we get <laughs> in learning to do miniatures. So you can practice. Um, there's so much information available. This is really boiled down, and we'll just give you a quick introduction to some of the things that you'll hear about if you start doing a little bit more research. Any questions? Okay. Um, so every color has three elements, hue, value, and saturation. And the hue, we'll start with that one, is just basically what's the, what is the color? You know, where is it on a color wheel? And hopefully everybody has a color wheel with them today. Um, this is a very simple one, but it's, uh, you know, it's still got all the main colors in it. Um, notice there's no black, no brown in a color wheel, no gray. Um, but anyway, the hue is the position of the color on the color wheel or its name, you know, whatever we're doing with, dealing with there. Um, the next element of color is value. And it's just basically how light or dark, and of course the lightest it can be is white and the darkest it can be is black. So what I've done here is I've taken this little painting um, and reduced it to just black and white. And this is kind of an interesting thing that you can do with your phone if you've got a smartphone. You can take a picture and just have it go black and white. And that way you can see how much contrast or how much value you have in your miniature. And if it's, it's, if it's just one thing, uh, unless there's something on it you really want to stand out, um, like say you're doing a little sofa and you want the stitching around the edges to really stand out, you might do them a very different value from whatever fabric you've chosen for, for the sofa overall. Uh, but this comes more into play when you're doing a whole setting and you want certain things to really stand out and you want other things that you really are either less important or that you don't want anybody to notice. Sort of like painting the black wires in the corner. 
<laughs> so that they don't show, right? And the third element is saturation, or how intense a color is. Um, other, obviously, there's other names for this. Vividness, chroma, richness, purity, brightness. So what I've got here is a black and white picture. And then as we move to the right, you'll see that we're getting more and more saturation in the colors until the colors are fully saturated on the far right. Same thing with the bar on the top, although I've gone the other way started with a really pure red and kept adding gray till it was gray. So this is, you know, kind of an idea to get you thinking about the saturation of a color. Then I've taken the three main or primary colors and lightened them and saturated them um, and unsaturated them, sorry, as we go down the little chart here. I don't know if, you, can you guys see my little arrow? Yeah. <laughs> oh, good. So that if I point to something, you can see it, good. Yeah. <laughs> All right, any questions about those three elements of color? We've got hue, value, and saturation. No questions? Okay, let's go on and let's look at the color wheel. Now this is Newton color wheel, which will tell you how long this has been around. Um, so if you start in the center, we have the three primary colors, red, yellow, and blue. And I'm sure for some of you, this is, you know, old hat and you've known this forever. But these are the three colors you can't make out of other colors. You have to have these three colors. Um, the secondary colors, which are the ones here, we have orange, violet, and green, are made from the two primaries. So in other words, if you mix red and yellow, you get orange, right? And then the tertiaries are made from a primary and it's adjacent secondary. So if you're trying to mix up a yellowish orange, obviously you're gonna use yellow and orange. Pretty straightforward, right? Some other little words that, we, that you probably hear all the time and I'm just kind of calling color lingo. We have a tint, which is a color with white added. And up at the top, you can see that we've taken red and we've added white to it till it gets to be a pink. A shade, which is a color plus black. And down at the bottom is a tone. And usually it, it, um, it can, you can get tones by adding gray, but there's other ways to do it, which we're gonna be talking about in a few minutes. And then there's temperature, how warm or cool a color is in terms of implied temperature. I mean, you think of red or orange or yellow as warm colors and blue and green as cool colors. The purples and violets can kind of go either way because they have a warm color and a cool color in them. Questions? Okay. <laughs> Back to the color wheel. So mixing colors is something I think that we all, you know, scratch our heads over or struggle with a little bit, which is why we have so many bottles of Ceramco, because we don't want to have to mix that color, especially things that are more complicated. I mean, of course, it's got another benefit if, that if you have to go back and touch up, you already have the color mix. But sometimes you just can't find the color that you want. So you save those empty Ceramco bottles, wash them out, and then when you get ready to do your big project, you're going to mix the color you want. Well, any, as we said a minute ago, you can mix any color with just those three primary colors and white. Now that's theoretical because you can't, subtleties of color are a little trickier, but we'll get to that in a minute too. But theoretically you can mix any color with red, yellow, blue, and white. Now the way to reduce the saturation of a color or the brightness or intensity of a color is one way is to add black or gray, but I would discourage you from doing that. Rather, add its opposite. So the opposite is the complement, which means it's on the opposite side of the color wheel. So the complement of red is going to be green. So if you want to tone down red, rather than adding gray or black or brown to it, add just a touch of green. And if that's still too bright, add another touch of green. Same thing, if you've got blue-violet, add a little orange-yellow to it, and that will tone it down. Uh, to darken a color, um, there's a lot of different ways you can do it. Adding a dark blue, a raw umber, a burnt sienna, or a darker version of that hue. For example, if you want to darken 
um, a light um, violet red, you could add a little bit of blue violet and that'll bring it down. I would caution you about adding black and Marsha will tell you that this is like <laughs> my life's work is to keep people from using black paint. <laughs> What happens is if you put it in there, it's a color killer and you can't get the color back. And if it doesn't turn out exactly the way you want, you pretty much will end up throwing it away and starting all over. But it just really wrings the life out of colors. And so I would hesitate to use it unless it's, there's absolutely no other way to do it. So as a last resort, add black to darken or um, reduce the intensity via color. A little at a time. <laughs> and a very little at a time, yes. And again, you can add other things. There's, you don't have to add black. Um, and then lighten the color. You can use white, of course, but sometimes yellow is a better, is a better option. It kind of depends on what you're going for. So just for some examples here, this is just a little sheet of trying to get to a, you know, see what happens if you start with orange and in the middle column I've added a little white and then um, the next one over I've added a little yellow and you can see the differences there. Interesting to see if, if the, this one and this one are pretty close. You know you get some that are pretty, I mean adding green to orange it's interesting what happens. It doesn't do what you think but look at that adding purple and can anybody tell me why that would get so much darker than these other ones there at the top? Come on, somebody be brave. <laughs> Let me go back to the color wheel. Why would adding purple to orange make it darker? Opposite sides. It's opposite. They're on the opposite sides of the color wheel. That's exactly it. Perfect. So if you're trying to mix a color, these are three questions that'll help get you closer to what you want. And typically what I try to do is find something that's the color that I want. I mean, it may be a photograph, it might be a piece of cloth, it might be, it could be anything. It could be a swatch, those little paint samples that you get, you know, at uh, Home Depot in the paint department. But start off with, okay, what hue is this? And that seems kind of obvious. But the next part of the question is really important. Is it leaning towards another hue? Like, is it, is it kind of getting, is that orange getting kind of reddish? Because that's an important thing to do. How light or how dark is it? And then how bright is it? How saturated or intense is it? And if you start going through those colors and keep looking at your example versus what you're actually mis mixing in your little, in your little, uh, your, the lid, if you're like me, the, the yogurt lid, <laughs> um, it'll help you get there a little more, a little more uh, straightforwardly. And I'm hoping that everybody will go and try mixing some colors uh, after we finish this. I mean, that would, if we were meeting in person, that's what we would be doing. We'd be mixing colors, um, but uh, it's a little hard to do here. Anyway, so if, if, it, if you don't get it on the first try, try again, because this is a skill that you really can build on and you'll get better and better at it the more you do it. All right, so here's some, here's some color progressions and we're just gonna do these with the, with the primaries. Um, so at the top level, we have tints, which is adding white. We start with that uh, red, yellow, or blue and add white. The tones are we add a little bit of uh, the opposite complementary color. And then the shades, we're adding a little bit of black. So if you look at the difference in the tones and the shades, you can see what I'm talking about, what happens when you add black to things. Just have to, like Marcia said, a little at a time. All right, so I hope everybody has, has a color wheel at hand, some one way or another, because um, we're gonna be talking about not just a single color, but the hard part, which is which colors go together and what do those combinations of color do for me versus not do for me so I know which one to pick. Now there's tons and tons of color schemes. There's probably hundreds. So what I've done here is just pick kind of the five most common ones. 
And now the pictures I'm going to show you are not things that, not colors that you would probably use to paint your miniatures with, because they're going to be pretty outrageous to try to make the point of how these different colors work together. Um, they're, they're pretty crazy, but hopefully it'll help drive the point home and it'll help you internalize how some of these different schemes work. Okay, everybody ready? Okay, so the first one is really one color, monochromatic. And it's a single hue, in this case it's blue. And we've done very um, various values. So you've got really, really dark, light blue to really, really dark blue in this picture. Um, we've got kind of grayish blues to brighter blues. So even by only using one color, we can get quite a bit of contrast and you can see what's going on. And it's, sometimes it's a good place to start when you don't know what you want to do. Um, a good thing you can do too is you can add a little bit of color variance. If you look over here on my arrow, as you'll see, there's been a little bit of a little purple added on right in this area, a little blue green up in here, and a little green down in here. Just a little, and there's some more green over here too, um, just to give it a little bit more interest so that it isn't quite so boring. But it's a good place to start. So here's some examples, and these are, so what I did for these was, I started off with paintings, and I decided, well, that's not as relevant for miniatures, but if I show interior designs, it could be the inside of our little rooms. So we've got three examples of monochromatic colors here, and uh, monochromatic color com uh, combinations, and I'm sure you guys can all see how this works together. Gives, you, gives the room or the setting or the miniature a really unified look. It pulls everything together. Now, obviously, there's other colors in there, but most of those are going to be real neutrals um, or maybe black, white, or gray, but tans and that sort of thing, uh, grays, that you know, can help support that monochromatic color combination. Any questions so far? Okay, because we're going to kick it up a notch here. We're going to go for two colors. So I want you to, hopefully you've got your 12 things. Does everybody have their 12 things? All right, I want you to look at those 12 things and pick any one color out of there that you really love. Maybe it's the one you use the most. Maybe it's just the color you wear the most. And pick your one thing, one color. All right, now I want you to pick that color's complement. We'll go back to the color wheel. So if you picked uh, blue-green over here, the complement would be a red-orange. Does that make sense? Yep. I just want to make sure everybody's still there. <laughs> Okay, let me go back over here. All right, so Repeat here's that. I'm sorry. Repeat that, please. Okay, so if if you've got if you know what your main color for a, a miniature is going to be, your main color scheme, and you want to use a complementary color uh, scheme, you, what you're going to do is pick the color on the exact opposite of the color wheel. So if your main color for your room is going to be violet or your house or whatever you're making, then you would want to pick yellow. Okay. All right. If you pick blue, it's going to be orange. Let's go back to this. Um, so if, if I pick like a red doesn't matter violet, what color you've got. Diane, sorry. If yeah. I pick like a red violet, like the color of my top, would it be green? It would be a yellow green. I, okay, so that would be a yellow It'd green. It would be a yellowish green. Yeah, a green with some yellow in it. Okay, that would be that one. Okay, thank you. Okay. Yeah, thank you. And that seems like a strange combination, yellow green and red violet, but let's we'll, we'll keep going here and you'll see how it'll work like for example maybe the yellow green is really really light or really really dark you know you can it doesn't mean you have to use just the pure color like we're showing here on the color wheel 
It's just in that red green, I mean, yellow green and red violet categories. The good news about compliments and the things why they're really, why it's such an important color scheme mm -hmm. is that when you put complementary colors next to each other, it really makes them pop. A good example is this Van Gogh painting right here. If you look at the orange roofs up here next to that blue sky, well, this overall orange next to that blue, it really makes this, you know, it's just so colorful and bright and cheery and all of that. What's funny about it, though, is that, as we said a minute ago, complementary colors do a strange thing, is if you put them next to each other, they brighten each other up. If you put them together and mix them, they tone each other down. So that's another reason why they're, why they're important. So let's look at some interior design things that use complementary colors. Now, again, this is just, I know you won't paint your house or your miniature these colors, but just to give you some ideas. All right, so there's that. Well, that's more of a pure red, not a purplish red, but um, the red and green together. And again, you see in all of these examples, the beiges, the grays, um, the browns really tone things down and help, help it be, you know, so it's not totally crazy. Really kind of give you a bit of control over all of this. Okay. I just want to make sure everybody's there. It seems like my screen always looks like it's and I guess probably because I've got this presenting thing on. All right, so these are complementary colors. So that's two colors. Now we're going to talk about three colors at once. And the three colors we're going to pick are going to be ones that are next to each other on the color wheel. So they're kind of in the same family and they're going to get along really nice and play nice and bring everything together sort of in the way that monochromatic does. but a little bit more interest. So they're called analogous colors. And sometimes you can even add in a fourth one. Like for example, we've got these three up here, the little chain. I could probably add that blue, that pure blue in here and it would still work really nice and still be uh, analogous. So it's any color on the color wheel and the color to the left of it or to the right of it, plus one more if you want. So, You'll see a lot of analogous colors in nature. Happens all the time. Probably not so much right now when things are blooming and crazy. That'll be more complimentary. But, um, but, right, but most of the time, nature gives us a lot of analogous colors. And again, it's serene, it's harmonious. Um, it's really important when you're doing analogous colors to pick one as the main color and use the other ones just like accents. Uh, otherwise, things will get, uh, it'll just get kind of muddy and you won't be able to see much of anything. The other thing that's really important is contrast. So you want to have really, really dark colors and really, really light colors, or you pretty much won't be able to see anything. You know, it'll just all mush together. So that's a little, a little tip about using analogous colors. <clears throat> Any questions? So go back to your, that color that you picked a few minutes ago. And out of your 12 things, pick the two analogous colors that go with that main color. See, ordinarily I'd have you have a piece of paper in front of you and you'd be, paint, you know, you'd be painting little color samples on your paper, but this is just a quick way to do it. But if you've got crayons or markers or whatever, you could scribble a little something off the side if you wanted to remember it. Now here's, here's four different interiors that are all based on analogous color schemes. And you can see how they really kind of, even though the colors are really pretty bright, they really kind of all blend and meld together really nicely. Um, this is, you know, it, when you look at um, most miniatures and that sort of thing, I mean, I just kind of keep my eye open for it, but I see analogous color schemes in, in miniatures probably more than any of the other color schemes. 
Hey, Kate. Uh, it's, a, it's a real safe hey. place to go. Was there a question? No, I was just saying hello. <laughs> Hi, <laughs> welcome. <laughs> Thank you. I was a little late, I forgot. It's all right. So if you, this is a way to, um, to I, I really encourage you to try, if you haven't tried using an analogous color schemes in one of your miniature dioramas, I would, I would highly recommend it. And even this one down here on the bottom has a few little surprises in it. This blue one with, it's got a little bit of orange and purple in there too, that really kind of kick it up. So it's kind of got some analogous elements, but then it's added in a few uh, complementary surprises. And that can be really interesting. Questions? You're a quiet bunch. <laughs> All right, so now things are going to get a little more complicated. We're going to still have three um, colors, but and they're going to be complementary colors. But rather than taking the colors that are straight across on the color wheel, we're going to take the one to the left and one to the right of it. And the little chart on there is kind of handy. So pick up your main color again out of your 12 things and find its split complements. For example, if you picked blue-green, your split complements would be, well, the complement um, for blue-green would be like a yellow, a reddish yellow, a reddish orange, I can't talk, sorry. But um, the split complement would be red and orange. The little sample up here, if you picked green as your main color, your split complements would be red violet and red orange. This is a wonderful color scheme. Uh, in fact, if you when you're if you're taking painting classes or art classes and that are very color focused, they will really encourage if you're having trouble, they will encourage you to use split complementary colors. The, the color scheme is just really hard to mess up it almost always comes out really wonderful because it's got enough going on to make it interesting, but still it has, the colors have enough of a relationship to each other to where they'll really hang together pretty nicely. Um, and again, it's, it's one you want to temper with neutrals and tones. And it's like the compliments in that it's kind of, you know, it's kind of jazzy and exciting, but it's a little less jarring than the straight compliments. It's a little, a little more tame than that. So this is another really great combination that I would encourage you to try. Okay. And here's some, here's some rooms with it. Now I gotta tell you that I, I'm absolutely in love with this picture with the orange wall over the fireplace. Mm -hmm. I don't have the guts to paint my living room like that, <laughs> but I would, I wish I did. <laughs> the other thing that's kind of interesting here is that we think about, you know, the paint when we're painting um, our miniatures, but look over this top right one with, with the green is that the oranges um, that are its split complement are coming from the color of the wood rather than the color of paint. So you've got to think about your woods and other things other than, you know, your metals, all, everything else has a color. So think about those colors too, as you're planning your, your scene, your miniature scene. Say which one again on the split complement, like if I picked this yellow green. Okay. And I'm looking at, okay, so is that the, the one by yellow itself? Green. Well, if you've got yellow green, it's split complements. Hold on, let me make this a little bigger. If you've got yellow green, uh, yellow. your split complements would be violet and red. Oh, well, that's what I had. Okay. Any other questions? So the green blue, it's uh, orange and orange red. Red and orange, yeah. Okay. Hmm. Now, well, we'll get to that in a minute. I'm, I'm gonna get, I don't wanna get ahead of myself too much here, but we'll talk about a few other things regards to this, because right now you're going, this woman's crazy. <laughs> I would never yeah, use I'm looking colors. around the room and, um, <laughs> 
It doesn't look. <laughs> it doesn't look like something you could use. Yeah, does it doesn't it? look like something, but I like right. it. Okay, but let's look at this painting. This painting is a blue green with the reds and the oranges. Mm -hmm. Now, there's not. There's a lot more blue green than there is reds and oranges. So that's something we're going to talk about in a minute. And none of them are as dark as or bright as in this color chart down here. So it's in those families. It's not using just the pure color. It's the combination of colors within that color family. So we've got a really soft, light blue green. And then we've got some pr small but pretty vivid areas of orange and just little bits of red, little bits of red. Okay, so we talked about this in the orange fireplace, which I love. I, I couldn't do that. I couldn't live with it. <laughs> it's too modern for me. Too modern for me. So another, another three color combination are triads. And these are, this is when you kind of move those complement, split complements over one more. And now you've got three colors that are evenly spaced on the color wheel. I mean, red, yellow, blue is the obvious one. You know, we all, we start with that with the three primaries. Um, but it can be a very dramatic color combination if you, um, if you use the pure colors, it's just gonna, they're gonna start to fight a bit. And this is true for all of these. If you use super bright colors, it's just gonna be, you know, your eyes are just gonna cross. So first thing you can do is you can use neutrals with it. Browns, tans, grays, um, blacks and whites. Um, I will talk about all, black and white in a minute. Um, you can mute those colors down <clears throat> so that they're not quite so intense. And then the other thing you can do, which I would really encourage you, is you're going to pick your one color, your main color, and have about 60% of the painting, the, the, not the painting, the miniature feature that color. And then another one is secondary. And then a third one is an accent. It's kind of like that picture we looked at just a minute ago. And, um, and if, you, if it's still too bright, remember that you can always uh, mix a little bit of something into it. So you can do the complement, or in this case of the triads, whatever your main color is, let's say in this case it's green, you can mix a little bit of green into that purple or into that orange and tone them down a little bit. So they're not quite fighting each other so much. But that 60, 30, 10 rule is a really great one and one that I use a lot. So here we're getting, we're, we're getting crazier and crazier with these color schemes in the, in the rooms, are we? <laughs> um, so but you, you can see what it, but look at the difference in this bottom right hand corner. Uh, it starts to be almost a reasonable combination because of that gray wall behind it. So you still have the triadic colors, but it's not like this one on the far left, which is just knock your socks off color, right? And, and this one up here is just kind of weird. <laughs> yeah. So one of the other things about colors that we're, we, it kind of jumps out at us every once in a while and sometimes a little later than we would have liked to have acknowledged it, is that colors have associative qualities. They mean other things than just the thing you're painting. Um, and sometimes it's a, an association you want. Like if you're doing a Christmas scene, what a pretty kitty. <laughs> um, like if you're doing a Christmas scene, you want to use red and green and white, you know, because it's, you want it to look Christmassy. But if you're trying to use red and green and it's not Christmassy, it can be a little more challenging. The other thing about uh, colors is that they often convey certain emotions and you know that you may or may not want to put into that particular miniature setting. So something to be thinking about ahead of time. I would really encourage you when you're planning your, one of your miniature projects, think about the color early on because it might lead you in a different direction than it would have otherwise versus, okay, now I've got it all built. Now what, are we gonna, what colors are we gonna paint everything? 
And again, if you've got, let's say you've got a, a, a seam with lots of red and green in it and you don't want it to look like Christmas, all you have to do is adjust those colors. Your red could become pinker or a little more muted. Um, the green could take on maybe a little bit more blue. So you can adjust those colors and it won't take much to knock them out of that Christmassy look when you don't want it. And it's true for the other ones here too. So another thing that we always think about when we're doing a miniature is if, you, if you're doing a setting that's in a particular time and place, you're gonna want to do a little research and find out what colors um, people were using during that period of time. And they're gonna be really different than what we use today. And you know, this is just a couple of examples. The one on the left is colors that were popular in the 1930s. And I was surprised to see how much orange there was in there, or gold. That's actually kind of supposed to be a gold, but it's an orangey gold. Um, and then lots of red and green. Then over on the right side, I've got the Victorians, which has, um, you know, it's, it, they're just colors that we don't usually use together. But that would be more historically accurate. And that'll give uh, a different feel to your miniature setting. If, so it's something, and if you look up online um, and just, you know, type in color palette uh, Victorian, you'll get, you know, tons and tons of color patches. Um, a lot of the main paint manufacturers like Benjamin Moore, you know, the different paint guys also mm -hmm. have really nice brochures that you can pick up that uh, will give you a bit of a modern take on those particular timed color schemes make them a little more um, today than the originals were. So you'll have to decide, okay, do I want something that alludes to Victorian color scheme or do I want it to be really authentic? And that's just something you have to decide. So a couple of things that are specific to miniatures. Um, like I was saying a minute, minute ago, I would really recommend committing to your color scheme really early in the process because it's going to make a lot of different uh, a lot of decisions easier for you. Um, when you're deciding, let's say you're doing a kitchen and you really want, um, you want the appliances and cabinets sort of to blend in a bit. You want them to be there and noticeable, but you don't want them to stand out. What you want to stand out is the cookie making on the, on the table in the middle of the setting. So let's say that you do all the cabinets in a light green or whatever. Maybe you put a red tablecloth on the table um, so that it'll really make that the, the cookie making really pop out of the kitchen. Um, what I typically do is I make a little test strip. I just get a piece of paper and I have one big block that's gonna be my main color that I'm gonna use as much as I possibly can wherever I can and maybe I use it and I do like the tones, the tints and the shades of it so I get an idea of that. And then what colors am I going to use on, with it depending on which color scheme I'm gonna to go to. And I make that color scheme depending on kind of what I want the feel of that particular setting to be. If, uh, if, it's a, if it's gonna be like a children's playroom, I want it to be happy and colorful, I'll probably pick more complimentary colors. If it's something that's supposed to be sort of a peaceful and restful thing, I might go to more of an analogous color scheme. Uh, the next thing I would suggest you do is um, what I typically do is once I kind of get the idea together, I get all my saran coat jars out that I think I'm going to use a little, you know, the little, the little bottles and I line them all up in order and then I move them around and whatever. Then I try to take away any that I possibly can. I want to simplify the color scheme and simplify the number of colors that I'm using. Better to use shades and tints of the same colors than have like five different greens in in the uh, piece. Now I may have five different greens, but if they're all based off of one, you know, leaf green, if you want to pick a ceram coat color, um, if they're all derivative from that one color, everything will pull together much, much better. Um, so, and then, then I walk across the room and I look at it. Is there anybody that's really jumping out at me that doesn't seem like it fits? 
And unless I want something with little accents and surprises that are really gonna pop out, I'll take that color out too. Or maybe replace it with something a little closer to what the rest of the gang looks like. The other thing I would suggest you do is where possible, and I know it's not always possible, don't use white or black. Better to add a little, you know, use light ivory or add just a little touch of brown to your white. Uh, for black, sometimes I'll add a little dark blue or dark purple or brown. Um, now there are times that that doesn't work and you re it really does need to be black or white. Um, but those things will really, anything really pure black or pure white will really, really stand out in your miniature. Um, and if you want it to stand out, good way to go. If you don't want it to stand out, this is a good way to do it. Just kind of tone it down uh, and uh, so that it blends in better with the rest of the stuff. Um, you can see it a lot. If you look at, if you look through like um, the Gazette you'll, and look at some of the photos, you'll see how the blacks and whites really pop out of some of the miniatures that people have made. Maybe that's what they were going for, so that could be good, could be bad, hard to say. Uh, the other thing is, I would, again, I wanted to mention that 60, 30, 10 rule about picking colors where you've got one color, one secondary, and everything else is an accent. It really ends the fighting of colors so that you don't feel like your eyes are crossing when you're looking at it. The next one's very, very specific to miniatures, is that if, rather than using pure colors, if you mute them down or lighten them up a little bit, they will look a lot more, your object will look a lot more realistic than it would if you use the pure colors. And it's partly because when you're looking at something that's a miniature, the closest um, simulation you have of that in real life is looking at something from a distance. And so what, they, what there is is within the world of colors, something called atmospheric toning. And the air between you and the object, the farther you get away from it, uh, the toning gets more and more and more. It's like when you're looking off at the distance at a set of mountains, the one that's the farthest away is gonna be the lightest and grayest, and they're gonna look darker as they get closer to you. Um, so that's a, a good way to think about it. So if you're, let's say, no matter what you're doing, if you tone it down just a little and lighten it up just a little bit, doesn't have to be a lot, uh, it will look a lot more realistic than if you use just a pure cuddle right out of the bottle. Um, and then we were talking about soothing a potentially strong palette with, um, by mixing a little bit of your dominant color into the each one, uh, toning it down by using off-whites, pastels, or neutrals in the same setting to kind of give your eye a place to rest with the bright colors that are going on. Or maybe even the not so bright colors that are going on. So um, what I would suggest that you do is a next step here, if I could give you a little homework, <laughs> uh, pick up one of your miniature settings and take a look at it and see if you can identify what you, you if you picked it, did you pick a main color? And if you did, what is it? And what are the supporting colors that you have here? We have a little cabinet here, which is a really dark, oh, it's kind of a greenish blue, but it's really muted. Um, but See how the orange items really pop? I mean, it's amazing. Um, and even the white ones do, too, the, and the white things really pop out too in this picture. Of course, it's a picture, it's not a real thing. But um, if you could look at this, you would say, well, except for that green plant hanging over the side there, it's pretty much a complementary color scheme. It's pretty much blue and orange. Now, obviously there's other things in there, but that's pretty much what it is. And if you look at something that you've made and you don't like the, col the, col the way the colors turned out, they're not working the way you wanted them to. I mean, the colors might be pretty and you might like the colors, but maybe they're just not working that well in the particular setting that you've made. It's a good way to uh, figure out, okay, what would you do different if you were gonna do it over again? Okay. So here's some, so if this is something that's of interest to you and you really feel like that you could use some work on the colors in your miniatures, 
here's a number of things. We did, we did a little bit here of number one, uh, using a, get a set of different color objects and figure out which ones you like. So if you've got your 12 objects and you've got your main color up there, uh, you can say, okay, now do I like this blue better with the yellow or do I like better with the orange or do I like it better with the green? You know, kind of which color schemes are your favorites? Another one that I would suggest that you try, and this is a really fun one, is that you find, look in a magazine, a color, on a website, online, wherever, and as you're looking at that picture, what color scheme does that, especially one that you like, what color scheme is that following there? Um, I don't think I said, did I tell you guys to bring a magazine? It was on the sheet, I think. No, 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 we didn't do that. Okay, that's all right. So, but, you know, one. maybe, you know, when you look, just when you're flipping through, good places to look are like mail order catalogs for clothing. Great place to look. Um, you know, anything that's real designy, you know, that has a lot of um, yeah. colors in it. Um, even to some extent, you can use like uh, gardening, uh, gardening, uh, catalogs but because they're really picking those colors based on what the color the plant really produces they're a little less helpful but if you get a uh, if you're like me and they and the magazines from mail order companies pile up find the ones that have really great color schemes in their pictures and see if you can map those back to the color wheel another thing that i like to do is that i'm also a quilter so this is an easy one for me, but you can, anybody can do it, is you just go into a store that sells fabrics and they'll have all kinds of fabrics that have like lots of different colors in one fabric. And this is the way a lot of times the quilters will pick out what colors they use in their quilt. They'll pick a fabric that they call a focus fabric. And maybe it's got six or eight different colors in it. And they'll use those colors um, to, uh, decide what other colors are going to be in the quilt and you can do the same thing so you've got a say you've got something that's a you know it's got paisleys and flowers and all kinds of stuff going on in it and that just a little swatch of that will help you uh, come up with an interesting color scheme based on somebody who's really an expert in color and is designing fabrics which is a great resource to be able to tap into I have a question Sure. If I'm picking a, a primary color or my dominant color, uh -huh. they would be blue. Does it have to be, can it be any form of blue or sh it doesn't have to be primary blue, does it? No, it doesn't. It can be any blue you want. And then the secondary color doesn't have to be like if I picked, I don't even know what to pick. If I picked violet, I mean, it could be violet or it could be a red violet or, I mean, does it have to? Well, yeah, I mean, I, you can pick, um, you, first of all, you can pick whatever you want. There's no, right. these are not laws. The, the, the color police are not coming to get you. Oh, good. <laughs> but, you know, a, lo a lot of times it helps to have a little bit of structure in there. And, you know, there's just so many colors, you just, it's a little overwhelming. So this gives you a place to start or a place to go that you know will be successful. So let's say that you start with blue. I mean, you could, I really like using blue and yellow with just an occasional little touch of red in there. And that's just stays and that's, you know, that's, well, let's find where that is. Those are the triads. Is that it? Yeah. So this would be a triad, red, yellow, blue. Um, okay. you know, there's almost always a color common, a color scheme for whatever colors you want to use. If you get the first two, it'll help you know what the third one is. That's another good way to go too. Okay, so it doesn't have to be. No, it could be any. It could be baby blue. It could be navy blue. It could be. Um, okay. And I could go then. Cobalt blue. I wouldn't have to do a complementary. I wouldn't have to do an analogous. I mean, I could do. No, you don't have to. No, of course not. It's just whichever, whatever you want. Okay. But just... let's say that you let's say that you picked blue and you also picked. Um, like a purplish 
to go with that. Right. Okay. So you can keep going and you could go more towards the violet red area. You could, um, you could go more to the blues and greens together. That's another way that you could go too. Okay. And so then you do 60% blue, let's say, uh, 30% green and 10% yellow green. And we're sort of all over on this one side. So it's still going to be analogous because it's three or four. Oh, um, the analogous right? is, is three right next to one another. Yeah. So you're picking, okay. picking a color and then you got the ones either on either side or just, you know, pick three that, you know, that, that are in the family, you know, they're kind of touching each other. Ah, okay. All right. Makes more sense. Yep. Yeah. Thank you. And again, it doesn't have to be this blue. It could be any blue. Okay. That's what we get back to when you're looking at a color and trying to identify it. You're asking, you know, what is, you know, what color is it leaning towards? And that's why it's important because it's going to help you pick that second and third color. All right. Okay. And if you're, if you're picking fifth and sixth colors, you probably got too many colors. <laughs> 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 probably I'm, to, I'm just trying to figure out what to put with my blue kitchen cabinets <laughs> okay well hopefully i mean the, the possibilities are endless right yeah looks like so it yeah yeah they really pretty much are so once you pick that second color you've sort of started establishing your color scheme and then from there that will help you pick a third color that will really work well yeah Cool. And you can decide, okay, do I want this all to pull together and be like this warm, fuzzy, cozy kitchen where everything's wonderful and peaceful and calm? <laughs> or is this an exciting kitchen where, you know, kitchen emergencies happen, you know? Yeah, <laughs> right. So the okay. tone of what you're trying to create can really make a difference in your color selection. Yeah, that I'll have to use the color wheel more. <laughs> <laughs> well, they're great. They really are. Yeah. Another thing you can do is like take a coloring book page and you know, they've got those applications on the phone or on your computer, on your tablets, where you can do coloring, you know, yeah. people that are, that's getting real popular right now to have coloring, adult coloring books. This, they're oh, yeah. great for this. So, you know, you basically, you can get one of those and uh, one of those little applications and some of them are even free and, you know, you can color it in with all the say, okay, I'm going to pick my main blue and let's try it with different blues and yellows and whatever. Go, no, I don't like that one. And then throw that one away and start all over. I mean, I used to tell, I used to tell my students, you know, okay, we're going to take a coloring book page and we're going to sit down and I want you to color it, you know, five different ways, one for each of the color schemes. Yeah. And it would take them pretty much a couple days to do that. Yeah. You can now do it in a couple of hours, you know, <laughs> or minutes, if it, as it were. Another way to do it is take a black and white picture of one of your miniature projects. And then use, you can use colored pencils or markers or whatever and color over the top of it. And it'll keep, it'll give you that contrast and value that you're looking for to find things. But you can get an idea of how the different colors will work. And maybe that's something if your kitchen's already built, you could do. Take a picture of it, print it out, and then try, you know, going over the top of it with paint or color pencils or crayons or something like that. And trying some different things before you start getting the actual paint and brushes out. Yeah. Yeah. Fun. Has this been helpful? I hope it has. Yes. 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 Yeah. It's hard to take it all in. <laughs> well, A lot. Yeah. you know what? Um, Marsha, if you want to post this presentation. Yeah, to, I'm going to. Uh, can to you hear me? MCC, that's fine. Then people can go mm. back and look at it if, if, it's, if it's helpful to them. I like some of those charts. Yeah, they're, and you know what? If you start looking, like if you went into, if you Google analogous colors, you will get like a hundred different websites that will give you similar charts. Oh, it's not exactly okay. The same. Good idea. Okay. These, yeah. So that that one, this slide right here, well, it's not a very exciting slide, gives you the five that we talked about today: monochromatic, which oh, is one okay. color; complementary, which are opposite colors; analogous, which are side by side buddies; split complementary, 
which are sort of like complementary but a little less crazy, and then the triadic, which are evenly spaced. Okay. So if you were to do a search on any one of these, yes. you, you will get massive amounts of examples, oh. <laughs> more than you'll ever want. <laughs> <laughs> Probably. My speaker was working. May I ask you a question, Diane? Of course. Um, once you've chosen your colors, do you want to match the tint or the tone, or, or should you use different? It's like I'm thinking if you choose a pastel, would you want the rest of the colors that you choose to go with it to be pastel too, or? Well, it depends. Do you want everything to sort of blend together? If you want it to all kind of blend together and nothing really pops out, keep your, keep your value the same. But you're probably going to want some things to stand out. So maybe those could be pastels, but they could be a little darker pastels. Let's say like, um, you have, let's say you're doing a, I don't know, um, a miniature garden and you've got your, you know, all your green stuff in there, but then mostly you want to have a lot of flowers. So you've got your pink flowers and your yellow flowers and your purple flowers and whatever. Um, and how, how bright or dark they are compared to your greens is going to tell you how much the, the flowers are going to pop out. Mm -hmm. So again, the more similar they are in color, or tone, let's go back to our three things again. Where's our three things? Here they are. The more similar, in other words, if the hue is similar, you wanna make bigger, make more differences in value and saturation to make things stand out. If the values are all the same, you'll wanna make the hue and saturation more different to make things stand out. So, you know, if you're turning up the volume on one of these things, or turning it down, you'll want to turn the other ones the other direction. Oh, okay. Thank okay. you. All right. Yeah. And again, that's just a guideline. It's not, there's no hard, fast rules or truths here. You know, it's, it's whatever you like. It really is. These are just starting points. Cool. Diane, oh, can, so can you hear me? Little picture here. Yeah. What is, what color scheme do okay. we mostly have here? What is that? Mostly Come on, yellow. somebody be brave. Yellow? Is it yellow? Okay, so what would you say is the main color? The main color yellow? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. It's, try it. What is it? No. no. Um, split complementary? No. No. It's that and that and that. So it's three together. Anag analogous? Very 60, good. 30, yes, yeah. Analogous, yes. There you go. So let's look back at a color wheel. So it was kind of here, and I mean, it was sort of along here, but it's, you know, the colors are, again, that's a color where they've done more pastels for the blues to tone them down. But she, he's got green, blue, green, yellow, green, and yellow. So it's right in here, you know, yeah, in that section. And even a little bit up here, you know. So again, these are not hard lines. They are, you know, they're starting points. They're places to get you started. Uh, yes, I will post the link to our Eugene Miniature Club and where you can get this afterwards where you can well, that's, yeah, that, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Don't need to post it twice. Did anybody else have any other questions or any color challenges you've been dealing with lately? So now I want everybody to go back to their, go back to your closet and arrange all your shirts. color <laughs> real. <laughs> Yeah. Mine actually are arranged that way. You, you, you think I'm kidding, but my, my closet really does. Well, mine does too. <laughs> mine is. Yeah. I did that for a while and then after the kids <laughs> came, stopped. <laughs> well, I did it because I couldn't find anything in my closet. Yes. <laughs> Something like organizing your miniature room. <laughs> oh, <Yeah>. come on. <laughs> 
it's a good thing to do. Although I do. <laughs> you guys, I have all of my uh, colors. You guys have. I'm color. looking at your rooms, and they're amazing. You know, they're oh, they're Pat and Doreen. Yes. Well, your rooms. Oh, they're rooms. in the Our same room, room Diane. A room facing room. each other. Yeah, <laughs> Pat and Doreen's look amazing. We're yes, crazy. they are. She, she's there. She's there. <laughs> oh, you're in the same room. <laughs> yes. <laughs> in the basement. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Patty's looks pretty good, too. Yeah. <laughs> Can't I, really the like the, I, I like the idea of putting my colors on a, a paper and, and just putting yeah. them out, see how they look together. Yeah. I really like that idea. I never thought I of doing that. A really cool thing to do is to, you know, go over to Home Depot and um, it's getting dark outside. Let me turn my light on. Um, <laughs> <laughs> go over to Home Depot or wh whatever your local paint shop is and, you know, get, get some color swatches, you know, and play around with them. It's a lot of yeah, fun. Yeah, surely. That's what you did, yeah. Yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah, she's muted. Shirley, you're muted. <laughs> yeah. Okay, what what did I do? Got some color deals from the paint section of store. Yes. I picked up a whole bunch of those. <laughs> nice. <laughs> I guess you did. Yeah. Um, I, I think at least our Sherwin Williams down here at one point you could buy their whole they had a whole big thing of them that was all of their color choices, everything, all the swatches in a um, big, huge thing. It was like five bucks, 10 bucks or something. Mm -hmm. And it, it has all the different shades, the tints, everything on wow. it. We, when, we, cool. when we got our new house, we got one of those. And um, I sometimes kidnap it to try and figure out colors, but um, <laughs> it, it's used, it's very helpful when we're trying to figure out colors and such, so. Yeah. Well, I hope this will be some help to you guys, too. Um, you know, again, it's, you know, if you're not sure, try it. You know, try it on a piece of paper first and see if you like the colors, yeah. how they work together. You know, it's sort of like music in that you, you can have all these different instruments and they might sound good by themselves and you love you know, you love clarinets, but if you put a clarinet on that song with those other instruments, it doesn't sound right. So it's kind of like that. There's a lot, lot of analogies here. We could do food, we could do music. <laughs> so you mentioned taking a black and white photo of your miniature and coloring over it. Um, I actually um, either will draw out, like let's say, um, when I'm making um, a hutch and I want to decorate it with certain color, you know, a painted hutch. Yeah. What I like to do is just do a simple, 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 simple sketch of it and just play around with um, different colors, you know, kind of like what you're talking about with the black and white photo. And most recently I did that with my phone. Um, so I took a picture of the hutch and then I used my phone to color until I figured out, hey, I, I like this, you know, and I wasn't trying to do, you know, what is the, you know, the, the scheme so yeah. much as just, you know, what do I like on the edges or the back and, you know, different things like that. So it's that's just a really, a That's a great idea. Yeah. They're yeah, just the different yeah. shades and all and tones. Okay, any other questions or anything? No, it was great. No, it's really good. I hope, I hope that was helpful and that next, you know, the, over the next couple of days, maybe as you're looking through magazines or watching TV or whatever, you'll go, oh, that's one of those analogous color schemes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, all this stuff is designed by artists these days. So you're going to see, you know, direct links to all this stuff that I showed you. 
it's it's all there it's just you know hiding under the surface a little bit it'll make you look at magazines a little closer <laughs> yeah it that too it absolutely will <laughs> and that's to go a really good one. way to go after diane gave this to our club they were emailing back and forth. Well, I'm I'm monogamous or whatever it is today. <laughs> <laughs> what are you wearing today? Yes. I'm complimentary today. Well, it's because yeah. my shirt is complimentary. <laughs> Marsha, uh, yeah. I'm we're masking up today. I have Melody here. She's the junior member of our mini club. Oh, awesome! So that's why cool. we're masking. <laughs> All right, very good. So I'm trying to help her color in a copy of the color wheel that I made. All right. So she has something to go by when she gets home. Shirley has a youth group miniature. Oh, great. Nice. Good awesome. for you. We need lots of those. Yes. Yeah, we, uh, there's two younger members, uh, my grandchildren, who are seven and eight. Or is it, yeah, seven and eight. <laughs> I gotta stop and think. <laughs> and Melody is our teenage member. Uh huh. Be their helper. <laughs> well, I'm trying to think if there's anything close at hand that I could show you that would give you some more examples. Um, well, I've got. I, should I show them the quilts that I showed this morning? Sure. So this is a, a miniature quilt, and it's, it's, it's a triadic color combination. This one is a Victorian crazy quilt, and it's oh. monochromatic with a few color, few color pink color accents, but it's mostly monochromatic. And I got one other monochromatic one over here. That round one I love. Um, the rug? Yeah. yeah. Well, it's not rugs. So, and here's a mono, oh. another monochromatic. Oh, yeah. Where, where's the where's round, round one? one? Oh, um, round yeah, this is, this is a yeah. French knot rug. Oh, that's pretty. How to do it. So yeah, those are all good. French knots. Oh, one strand God. of embroidery thread, one circle around. One wrap, 1,600 per square inch. We, have a, lady in our, we have a lady in our club <laughs> here in them. Jacksonville that she's made several of those, and I mean, it gives me a headache just looking at it, watching her do it. <laughs> my mom lot, did some of them. My mom a lot did. A lot of stitches. It is a lot of stitches. And this one's complimentary. See, so complimentary doesn't have to be totally crazy. That's pretty. Yeah, that's pretty. Yeah. Oh, this one's, this one's split complimentary. So. That's pretty too. Well, thank you. Yeah, thank you so much, Diane. Yeah, yeah thank very, you. Very welcome. I was Great. very thank nice you. to meet all of you, and I've been following along on. You know, Marsha's had me following along on your uh, your email threads, and I'm, I'll probably be joining one of your other meetings as something other than right. a presenter here. Oh, good. <laughs> thank you. Cool. Well, thank you thank very you. much, Diane. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 Diane. <laughs> <laughs> okay well i hope you all enjoyed that to some extent oh that, yeah, was, that was good yeah really good yeah i enjoyed it something to, something to think about think and, about oh i gotta stop recording now i guess <laughs>